Hi, I'm Opal Mitchell. I work for the Central Arkansas Library System and I work at the Nixon Library Branch. Um, this is the Sewing 101 class that I do on Fridays um, at 1 o'clock. And um, today I was going to kind of go over um, what I was doing wrong at the end of last week's program uh, when I was showing you how to do buttonholes with the, the Brother sewing machine. Uh, I was actually doing it opposite than what you're supposed to um, as far as the settings go. So when I was showing um, uh, how to do, do the buttonhole, and it wasn't sewing correctly like both sides of the buttonhole. One side was um, where the stitches were closer to together and the um, other side they were further apart. It looked more like a zigzag. Um, whenever I was changing the settings on it, um, I had it in my head backwards from what I was reading on the, in the manual. Um, I was going to cover that, but um, let's see, it doesn't seem like anyone's really watching right now, so they may not really care if I correct that or not, but it was in the manual, um, and there was two, I'll just quickly kind of show you on the dial um, what I was doing wrong. So I can see it um, here on the dial. I was uh, adjusting this um, to for the wrong side to fix it. Um, look again and see what I was doing. But um, in the manual, you adjust the gray knob setting. Uh, for how close you want the stitches to be on the, let's see, let me get one of these that you can see. These look good, but um, this is just an example. So if you're looking at this side right here, the stitches are close enough, but say that they're further apart and they look more like a zigzag stitch, um, you would adjust the gray knob here between the F and the zero to get those stitches closer together. Um, for the left hand side, um, if you have them further apart, then you'll adjust this knob, oops, this knob right behind here. You have to use like a penny or a quarter or something to adjust it. So that's how what I got backwards last week. Um, I finally got it working once I started doing it correctly. So um, that's what I was doing wrong on that. But um, this week, um, I want to go over some more basic information um, about your sewing machine. I'm going to switch back to me um, because it seems like a, well, the thing doesn't want to raise up. <laughs> um, I wanted to go over um, some more basic information about your sewing machine because it seems like I'm getting mostly uh, people that are pretty new um, to sewing and they have questions about why is their machine doing this or why is it doing that. Um, so I'm going to go over kind of, there's a few different things. Um, uh, I know a lot of people have problems and I've had this before too where you're sewing along and all of a sudden everything gets tangled up underneath uh, your sewing foot. Um, and when you go to undo it to pull your fabric out, it's stuck and won't come loose. Well, don't just yank it out of there. Don't don't be rough with it because you might break something if you do that. So um, the best thing to do, let me grab one. So um, just be very very careful because these are sharp. Use like your seam ripper to get up under there and just cut it loose. Cut all of the little because um, this is small enough you can fit it up under there. Now if you have some smaller scissors that will fit up underneath your fabric that won't hurt your fabric then just cut it loose that way but um, just be very gentle um, about just cut all of the threads first and um, put, so you can get your fabric out of the way and then you'll have to open up um, depending on which kind of machine you have because there's two different st styles of bobbins there's the drop-in and then there's also the one that's in the metal case that goes into the side of your machine um, the depending on which one you have, um, you're going to pop open the top part of the drop-in bobbin 
and make sure that you have some tweezers so you can make sure you can fish out all the um, threads that have torn loose inside of your machine. Get it cleaned out really good and you may even want to get um, a small, um, uh, there's little brushes that you can get to help brush out um, dirt and, and fuzz and stuff that will get up in there and, and clean it out really good because that can also, if you're not sure what's causing your machine to do that, Sometimes it's just dust and fuzz that has built up underneath the um, feed dogs or under the plate of your machine. So if you do a lot of sewing, that could help happen a lot. Or if you're using fabric that um, frays a lot or has a lot of fuzz to it, like um, fleece type material, you might have a buildup under there, under your plate, faster than some other people would. Normally, if you're sewing with um, just plain cotton fabric and you're using um, thread that's not real fuzzy type thread, you're, you're using um, a moderate priced um, thread and not the real cheap kind because the cheap kind does have fuzz on it and it will build up underneath the plate also and get um, it will gum up your machine and you will have problems with sewing. You'll get the bird's nest and stuff too that way. Um, so just be mindful of that could be a reason why you're getting the bird's nest where it's all gumming up underneath there. Um, clean that out real good. Um, you always want to start over again um, when you have that happen. So completely unthread your machine. Take the thread out of the top part and also take the bobbin out. You'll want to redo both of them um, each time that you have an issue like that because um, Usually something has come loose, um, maybe the last thing you sewed, um, uh, you may have pulled it out from under there a little quickly, and so something might have just came unhooked. Um, you know, with threading your machine, there's so many different things you have to feed it through. You may have undone one of them, and I've seen that happen a lot in my class before, too where um, it may be just to be the very last part of where you're threading it up to the needle. That one little bar, you have to put it underneath. It may have came out from under that bar right before it goes through the needle, and that will mess it up pretty quick too. Um, and that's all you have to have happen sometimes for you to get a bird's nest under there. So watch for that too. Um, let's see. And tension. Uh, a tension can cause a problem like that too. Um, I don't know, I think I have, yeah, uh, where is, yeah, I think that one's up there. I'll show you, we have a model of a brother that has a, an actual knob on the front, that's the tension knob, and that one, um, if you, if the thread gets pulled too quickly, it'll get stuck in um, the, uh, what are they called? Um, it's like the... It's, they're called tension plates. It might get stuck between the tension plates and um, that can, if it gets hung up like that, you could end, where the thread is not being pulled through, you could end up with a bird's nest also because if the thread is not coming cleanly and easily through the top part of your machine, then the bobbin is what's going to cause the bird's nest underneath is because the two are not connecting together. So that will gum it up too. So kind of be watchful of that. Um, Let's see, I'm kind of looking at my notes to make sure. All right. Um, and this was something I didn't realize I was reading about it. Um, you can um, make slight adjustments to your tension. Um, usually, sometimes it needs just to be tightened up. Um, that can cause a bird's nest too if it's too loose. Um, and that's your tension on top. Um, on Your bottom tension is where your bobbin is and the drop in bobbins there's not really a way to adjust the um, tension on it but the metal bobbins that have the metal case they have a tiny screw on them that you can actually adjust for tension on it um, that's kind of rare that you have to mess with that typically it's um, it's correct um, I did find out with the metal bobbins um, let me grab one so I can show you real quick um, there's a way to double check the tension on those. Okay. On these metal ones, um, to see if the tension is correct, actually the Singer manual told, 
told you how to check this. I don't have one like this at my, mine's the drop in from the top. But if you like do this, whoops, the whole thing fell out. Um, they said whenever you, you um, shake it, if it falls down an inch and then you shake it again and it falls down another inch, that's the right tension. If you shake it and it falls really quick and it goes more than just a couple of inches, then that's too loose. You only want it, you want to be able to bounce it a couple of times and it only fall about a couple of inches total. Um, if it doesn't fall at all, it's too tight. Um, let me grab this real quick. It just rolled across the floor. And um, I did not know that. She said, though, um, also you may want to adjust your tension on the bobbin if you're doing different types of fabric. I typically um, don't use anything but cotton, uh, maybe some fleece or flannel. Um, I don't really work with heavy fabrics, but this person that I was reading about... Um, the stuff that she likes to work with when she was doing curtains with the heavier material she said that she had to adjust um, her bobbin um, for that heavier material because um, that was causing a problem for her but she said just that's about the only time she ever noticed that she really truly had to adjust the tension on her bobbin wow I must have really wound this out quite a bit okay there we go finally got it but um, there's a tiny little, let me show you, where is my, uh, it's not going to keep it in focus, is it? It's too close. But it's a tiny little screw right here that you can turn. And she said if you ever need to turn it, um, mark it where it's normal, like if, it's, if the tension is perfect on it, you mark it with like a permanent marker where the normal tension is if that's good for you and then that way when she adjusted it for the thicker fabric she knew where to turn it back to to get back to her normal tension um, so I thought that was a nice little trick to do but um, I wouldn't recommend um, trying to get this back in there um, messing around with really thick um, fabrics um, right away if you're new to sewing um, that's something more professional um, you really be getting when you're starting out with any new craft it's always best to do more simpler type things in the beginning and that one seems more advanced in my opinion I would um, get a little more used to your machine and how it works normally before advancing on to more difficult crafts um, with your sewing machine like the thicker fabrics or harder harder patterns to follow and so forth you don't want to get discouraged because you can't those you just don't want to cause more problems for yourself in the beginning once you get more comfortable with it then yeah jump right in I always recommend that uh, with any new craft that people are learning um, whether it be knitting and crocheting or sewing or painting um, try to do the easier stuff in the beginning and get used to your machine and how it works and be comfortable at troubleshooting your machine and what kind of problems that you could have with it. That way when you do a more difficult pattern or project you won't be pulling your hair out and stuck and not being able to figure out what's going on. You'll be more likely to be able to figure out what to do. Um, let's see. Um, and I'm also going to, I'm going to go over some more of this other stuff too before I move on. Um, I'm also at the end here I'm going to show you how to there's some um, sewing feet that I have that I tried out yesterday that were really cool and made sewing so much easier that I'm going to show you a couple of those. Uh, they were really nice. Um, I've worked with bias tape quite a bit and I had a bias tape um, binder foot and I, I didn't realize um, that I guess I hadn't I bought a bunch of a package of so, different sewing feet for my machine and hadn't really looked at all of them and um, this one makes it so easy um, sewing bias tape onto the edge of your fabric it, it just made it so simple I'm gonna sh show you that one real quick it's easy and then a blind stitch foot if you ever want to do alterations to say you have some dress pants you want to shorten them 
Um, this this helps you with um, doing a blind um, hem stitch, and uh, it also helps you keep a, a nice straight edge on. If you want to have a certain um, sew, like a certain length, let me show you some example. I'll show you how it works. But say that you want to keep a nice straight edge to it. Um, there's a foot that you can use that will line it up all for you where you'll have a consistent um, space on the edge of your when you're sewing around your fabric. It was really neat and it was really simple to install too so I'm going to sh show you a little bit about that. But uh, I'm going to go over a little more about um, just different things that you could be having problems with with your sewing machine. Um, and if you buy cheaper thread, I already kind of talked about that, you don't want to buy the wrong thread for the wrong project even. Um, your manual is going to kind of give you an idea uh, what types of needles are good for what types of fabric. Well, you have to worry about what kind of thread um, works for different types of fabric too because um, heavier fabric, you, you may need a little bit heavier thread for it. But typically, you're not going to use really heavy threads. Um, if you're just doing normal sewing, that shouldn't really be a problem. Um, so, and don't mix threads. That you know how you can buy a whole box of bobbins, the different colored bobbins. If you have a whole box of those different colors, and then you have an actual spool of thread, um, you're like, oh, they kind of match. I'm going to use this as my bobbin, and this as my thread. Well, if they're not the same type, if one's thinner than the other, then you can have issues with sewing. If they're not the same weight, and if they're two different brands even, then you won't really know. You can eyeball and go, well, I don't know. So if, if you've decided to use two different ones and you're having issues with the bird's nest or the thread breaking on you, it's probably because they're not the same type. So just wind you take that bobbin out wind a bobbin from the thread that you have and then use those two together and if you're using those two together it should solve your problem so watch for that too um, and using cheaper threads will have problems too um, and then uh, and sh that's another thing thread that's too fine or, t or heavy for your needle type so um, this is always a, a way of um, tearing out stitches. Yeah, it'll cause problems too if you you don't match those up. And um, I always keep mentioning the manual because the manual has the information about you know what works together. So keep your manuals, and if you don't have a manual, you, you should really buy one for your machine. Okay, um, let's see what else we got here. Um, if you have problems with your skips, uh, skipping stitches. Um, first, uh, does your project match your needle? That's a common mistake. Um, like I said, uh, you'll have a list and let me grab my manual real quick. Um, your manual will list for you types of fabric, types of thread, and your needle. And it actually has this one marked that fall on the floor. But that's the way this one is listed. They've got fabric type and they've got your thread type and your needle type in here. Um, actually I'll swap it around so you guys can see it. So see, um, your manual does tell you. So if you're looking at them and it'll even give you, you know, it says medium weight fabrics but then it actually gives you what type of fabrics they are to give you an idea. I've done the jersey before and um, it does call for a different type of needle. And um, when I switched it out to that, uh, I didn't have any problems with the jersey stretch It's because it's a stretchy material. You don't need a sharp pointed needle for jersey. So you need to get the kind that's appropriate and that's the, the needle size. You need to get the appropriate kind because it can actually damage your fabric too if you have the wrong kind of needle. And then it recommends what kind of thread too. This says thread for knits. Sometimes um, you can get thread that says that you know it works for everything. Um, 
so just see if your thread works. If you're having issues, then you might need to switch over to a thread that's actually meant just for knits. And it, it tells you the size, too, of the thread. So you have to really pay attention to all these different things whenever you're um, uh, sewing because that's when you're going to run into problems. All right. Um, that, then that's the one of the things that can cause your stitches to skip. And um, here's some quick, quick things that you can look at. I'll switch back over again. Um, you might need to change your needle because um, needles are typically um, needing to be changed out after every project. Now, if you're doing a small project, that's not necessarily true. If the project only took you a couple of hours, then you probably don't need to change out your needle. Um, they suggest if you don't switch it out for every project on your for your needles, then to do it for every 16 hours of use. So if you've used that needle for 16 hours, you probably need to switch it out to a newer needle because that can cause problems of skipping stitches. Um, it could it could even possibly mess up your material. It could cause problems. Um, so that watch on that too, um, and I think um, I found a really good deal on Amazon some uh, where you could buy some needles in bulk. I'm actually going to be buying some for the library because we've got so many machines, especially for the universal needles that are for most projects. Um, you may need to rethread your machine if it's skipping too. That's actually a more common fix for most problems. Um, I do that first. Anytime I have any real issue, as long as I'm not fiddling with um, like settings on my machine, if it was sewing fine and then I changed my settings, then I feel like I've done something wrong with my settings. But if you were sewing fine, didn't change any of your settings, and you're still needing to sew similar things that you, like you were sewing before, and then all of a sudden you have skip stitches or something like that, rethread it. Rethread the top part and take the bobbin out and put the bobbin back in again too. Make sure that it's still clean in there and there's no dust or fuzz that would be causing any problems. Those you're going to change that and check that more often than anything else when you're having problems with your machine. I always do that first, and 90% of the time that fixes whatever issue that I'm having. Unless, of course, I've been like I said, if it was sewing fine and then I changed some settings on my machine because I wanted to do something different. Um, let's see, and you may need to decrease or increase your stitch length. Um, that that can happen too, especially if you're going from sewing something that's thin, that's not a lot of fabric, it's only a couple of pieces of fabric, and then you all of a sudden switch over to something that's four layers of fabric, or you might have some batting in there, something that's much thicker. Yeah, you. I would say do your stitch length, make it a lot longer because that's going to um, help. Not only is it going to keep you from skipping stitches, but it's also going to make it where your machine can actually sew through it because it will get stuck on the really thick stuff if you don't increase the length of your stitch. And typically when you um, have thicker fabrics, you're going to have to not only adjust the length of your stitch, but the tension. Because you need to make it a lot looser if you're working with thicker fabrics. Um, but be sure to switch it back to your other settings when you go back to the thinner fabrics because um, then you're going to have issues again if you don't have the right settings. And if you want to, write it down somewhere near, like on a post-it note and stick it on your machine if you want to. The most common settings that you usually set for your most typical sewing, like if you're just sewing with um, cotton fabric all the time, nothing else that's thicker. Then if that setting works well for you and you have trouble remembering, just be sure to mark it somewhere and put it nearby and keep it with you. Um, let's see, and don't, this is a, something I see in my class a lot whenever I'm teaching. People want to push their fabric through when they're sewing. You're only guiding your fabric, you're not pushing it through. If your feed dogs are not pulling your fabric through for you, then there's something wrong with your machine. You shouldn't be having to push your fabric through. Um, even when you switch over to thicker fabrics, um, you 
only going to put any force on feeding it through. Like maybe you have a large bump or something, you might have to help it a little bit, but typically you're not going to push it through. Um, I was showing on my class last night that I was doing, um, if you're having trouble getting it through, grab a hold of the thread that's on the back side of where you're first getting ready to sew, because you usually have a length of about that much thread when you're first starting. Once you've already like gotten one stitch into your fabric or two stitches, grab a hold of that thread and pull it to help your machine pull the um, fabric through. Once it gets a hold of it good, then it's going to pull it through no problem. But that's a nice little way to kind of get it to help it along. But you don't want to push push your fabric through because that will cause problems. Um, it'll skip stitches for sure if you do that. Um, and it won't be straight, you'll have all kinds of problems. So you're just guiding your fabric to through your um, machine, you're not, and you're always keeping too, I always tell people, don't put your hands up in there. Keep one, your right hand in front of your work, just kind of guiding it, and your other hand on the side. You're just kind of guiding it through. Don't put your hands up in there because you might sew your fingers. You know, that's, that's an easy thing to do if you're not careful. And slow down when you're sewing. Don't, it's not a race. <laughs> and uh, that's the one thing I had to practice on a lot whenever I first started sewing. Um, you don't want to sew quickly because you can't see what's going on and you can't get straight stitches if you do that. Um, so take your time. Try to learn how to go slow in the beginning because it's really good to learn how to be able to sew slowly because um, you can be more accurate that way. And then when you get more comfortable, you can speed up a little bit, but learn how to go slow because in the beginning you're getting used to how fast or how hard to push the pedal to to speed, you know, either speed up or slow down. So be, you know, try to learn to do that in the beginning. Um, if you end up with a bent or broken needles, well, first thing that could be wrong is it could be cheap needles. Um, if they're, they're too weak, yeah, they're going to break, and if it's not a good manufacturer, so. That's the same thing as with the thread. Don't get the cheapest. <laughs> um, get something moderately priced, not the most expensive. I mean, you just got to and look at the reviews and see what kind of things other people have said about it, too, to get an idea if it's a good brand. And when you find a good brand, stick with it. Um, going with the cheaper stuff just doesn't usually work. So don't buy the cheaper needles. <laughs> um, Unless it's a good brand and it happens to be on sale or something. I've, I've found those at Tuesday morning before that it was a, a name brand, a good name brand, but it was cheaper at Tuesday morning. That's okay. Um, and of course, with the needles, if you're having it break or bend on you, um, it's probably time to switch it out. It's probably an old needle you used enough, you need to, you need to change it. And like I said, um, either change your needles out every, every new project you start or um, after 16 hours of use, then you need to change it out. Um, that's just the good rule of thumb. Um, and don't use the wrong kind of needle for the wrong kind of fabric because that's going to give you a bent or broken needle also. Because if it, it's not made to go through the fabric that you're sewing through, then yeah, you're going to have get it. It's going to break on you, or it's going to bend. Um, let's see. And for if you have continued issues with it breaking and needle breaking, um, especially if it's an older machine that was handed down to you, that you don't know what, what kind of use it's had, you know, if it was used roughly or whatever. Um, an older machine might, you might need an expert to look at it if all, every time it's breaking a needle. So you might want to think about that. If it's a brand new machine and it's doing that, then, um, yeah, you might want to take that back, and, and especially if it's in the warranty. But uh, typically, you're not going to have that kind of... That's not a very common thing. Um, and then the next thing I was going to cover was making sure you have the right needle for the right type of fabric and the you know project and everything. But I've kind of already covered that. And that's, that's going to be in your manual. So um, just look at that. And um, the next thing, I'm going to do something on tension here. I'm going to switch this around again. Um, this is a really cool thing I found online. I love it because it's color-coded and it's all about tension and how to know that you have the correct tension. And this is actually came from um, the OU Crafty Girl website. 
Um, so I thought that was kind of cool. Um, but uh, to show you that when you have the correct tension, the correct tension is, um, I love this, this is your top thread and this is your bobbin thread. <laughs> See, you're only going to have them visible. And a great way to test this is to load up a different color, and color thread on your top and a different color thread on your bottom. That way, when you sew, you can see whether or not you could see the other colors on the other side of the fabric. So this will show you that if you can only see the top thread here and you can only see the bottom thread on the bottom of your fabric, then you're, you've got the correct tension. And then uh, I love this too, where if um, this is your first problem, and this, this is just a cute little thing to keep on hand, especially in the beginning if you're learning. Um, if your top tension, uh, you can see the bottom thread, then you've gotten the tension, top tension too tight. So <laughs> they minus a person. <laughs> so you lower your number, you know, on your tension dial, which that um, on this machine is this dial right there. So you would lower it, which, which right now it's on a three, that's pretty low. Um, typically, on tension, you're going to most of the time be between 5, 4, and 3 on your tension on most things that you're working on. Um, just whatever I happened to be doing before, I needed the lower tension. But um, So that's how you remember to do that. And then if you are having problems with um, seeing your top um, thread on the bottom of your fabric, then you've gotten it too loose. So um, then you need to add a person there, which would increase your number. On, like I said, on the dial here, you need to go up, go up at least. I usually go up at least one, try it again, and then I'll go up to the next number if I'm still having issues until I get the, the right tension. And um, so I thought that was pretty neat. So if you want to print that out, um, go to the OU Crafty Girl, um, and she, it's a cheat sheet that she's got, and I thought it was really cute. Um, in a fun way to, to check your tension. Alrighty. Um, and then I already showed you the, the metal bobbin um, where you can um, adjust the screw on it for the tension on it. Um, so that could be another problem with your tension. Um, and they do not recommend, if you're buying just a basic machine, um, just you know one at Walmart or something like that just a run-of-the-mill basic sewing machine then you don't want to sew through more than five layers of fabric because your machine is not going to be built to handle more than four layers of heavy especially the heavier fabrics so excuse me so that can cause a tension issue too if you're trying to um, sew through something that's too thick and I will not just to, just to tell you, I will not recommend sewing on um, regular denim fabric on your just your run-of-the-mill sewing machine unless you have um, really a heavy-duty sewing machine. Which my mother, even when she worked as a seamstress um, when I was younger at a, um, a dry cleaners, she had um, her own machine, but they gave her one that was one of those tabletop old-fashioned Singer machines. It was actually an electric one, but it was one of those black metal Singer sewing machines. And she said that was the only one that was tough enough to sew through regular denim whenever she was all doing alterations to denim. And um, she said, you don't, you just don't want to use your regular sewing machine for denim. Uh, they're really not built for it. Um, they really can't handle that kind of fabric unless it's that really really thin denim that you can buy that's more like a cotton fabric it's super thin you could probably it could probably handle that okay but regular denim no don't don't sew that on a, on your sewing machine okay um well that was most of the stuff I was going to cover um for just basic issues and problems that you could be having with your sewing machine I was going to offer if you have any questions if you wanted to ask me any questions I try to help you out um, but it didn't seem like anyone's watching right now to ask me any questions so um, I'm gonna go ahead and get the stuff out of the floor that I dropped a minute ago and um, I'm going to 
grab these couple of sewing feet that I have that I was going to demonstrate for you guys. Um, I, I bought a set of sewing feet online and um, here let me switch this over because I know it's reverse um, where I got 42 pieces. So I have 42 different um, uh, sewing feet for my machine. I, ha I hadn't tried them all out yet but the ones that I wanted to demonstrate today is um, this one's for bias tape. It helps you keep it all lined up when you're sewing it. That I thought that one was pretty cool. And then um, this one I was going to demonstrate. I got one with that set that I bought and it, this is the one that came with my set. But my machine was a nicer machine so it, it actually came with it, they're the same thing, they're just made differently and have different adjustments. So that came with my machine and this came in that set that I bought. Um, so I'm going to use the one that came with my machine. Um, and I'll show you and then if we have time, if you're interested, um, also um, it's nice to learn how to use a walking foot. Um, it's one of the most, I think with most sewing, you, it would be worth it having a walking foot. Because I know most people, even if you're not going to quilt, you probably are going to deal with some thicker fabrics that um, maybe you want to make a, a placemat or you want to make um, a hot pad or something like that that's going to be somewhat thicker. A walking foot will really help you out on getting an even feed because it, what it does is it, it actually, the, it, the, this right here, helps walk the top fabric through your machine as the feed dogs are walking the bottom fabric through. So that way it's pulling both um, all the fabric through at the same time at a, a, a speed where it's not going to get clogged up or jammed up. And uh, when I do this I'll have to swap out a few things. Oh, I forgot all about this. Being a library we have some really cool videos. Oh, that's got a, that light. I'm going to turn that light off for a second so you can actually see it. Um, this is a really nice video I recommend. Um, this series, the Homestead Blessings, um, they do a whole bunch of um, videos. Um, this one just happens to be on sewing. Um, they, they do them on sewing, uh, I think canning and soap making and all kinds of stuff. But it's, a, it's like a family of ladies that um, uh, hold several generations, and there's a picture of them there, um, that's really neat. Um, I thought that was a nice beginner's type. Uh, I liked it so well I bought it because this is my copy. Um, that was really nice. And then I was also interested in quilting, so I, I also got their um, Art of Quilting one too, which is really nice. If you're just interested in reading or learning about quilting, you just basic quilting, I must say they laid it out so nice and plain for you, and they showed you different ways of quilting, like hand quilting also, that I thought it was really neat. Um, so that was a fun one. So you might want to check this out from the library. Um, and we have some really nice um, just beginning videos too that you might want to check out. There, I thought there was another one that I had, but um, I couldn't find it at home. Let's see, I'm gonna turn that back on so we can see this better. But I'm gonna demonstrate. Um, there's one of these feet. Uh, I did this last night. This is a blind hem stitch. You can't see it because it's black fabric and black stitching. But what it does is, like if you're hemming something up, um, when you fold up your fabric, like so, it when it's stitching it, it only catches, like there's a stitch, there's a stitch, there, it's almost where you can't see the stitches on the outside. So, you know, like say you have dress pants or a skirt or something and you want to hem it up because it's too long, that's the stitch that you would use to um, once you cut it to the length that you want that's how you would restitch it so you couldn't see it and that's why it's called a blind hem stitch you can't really see the stitch on the outside you can see it on the inside but you you can kind of see it a little bit but see it's kind of a weird little stitch um, let me see and here it is on the actual machine so um, it's it was kind of neat so um, I was going to show you how to do that one and then uh, this is the bias tape. 
Um, I've worked with bias tape a lot, but um, I've done it all on my own before without the help of um, this um, foot right here that I'm going to put on there and show you. This is pretty neat. It, it kept everything all lined up for me nice and neat, and I didn't have to struggle with it like I normally do, so I went ahead and brought uh, some of that with me to, to sew. And um, I was going to ask if people had any questions, but then people left again, so. Um, so let's see here. Let me turn this on. And the last time I was working with the uh, button thing, so I'm taking that out of the way. And I've got a white thread and then a black thread. That's mostly to be able to see your stitches um, whenever you're learning. Normally you're going to have the same color thread on both. All right, so changing out feet on these machines are pretty easy. Let's see, I might have to scoot this forward so you guys can see everything a little bit better. And if anyone has any questions while we're, I'm just demonstrating this, so um, if you do have questions about other things, you can always let me know because it'll pop up on my thing here. All right, so this is, um, you could adjust it depending on what kind of fabric and um, uh, what type of bias tape you have. And whenever you're doing your bias tape, you want, I'm going to line it up on my fabric here, and then I'll show you the difference. It's hard to see when you have it folded out which, which side is longer than the other because you want the shorter side on top. Um, you don't want the longer side on top when you're sewing because then you might not get it in in this right spot. Okay, so I'm lining it up. So you look at them and see the bottom one is a little bit longer than the top because they don't quite, you can kind of see it, this one's longer than this one. So this is the shorter one. So that's what I want to sew because I want to sew right on the edge and you line up your fabric and then you slide it in to the front of this and I might have to do some adjusting I'm going to put this down and I want to see where my needles gonna hit because I want to get as close to the edge as possible which I'm not that close I want it to be more closer to this edge to adjust that oh and I, I've got a lot of other settings I need to adjust this one my stitch length is like almost on zero so that's gonna to be too short so I need to go at least to a three or a four and this is on a one right now which that's for a button hole we don't want a button hole oops we want the two because two is a straight stitch on this machine so we want to get all of that lined up alright and let's see um, this up here will change the position of your needle. So I'm going to go to a 5 because that moves it to the left. See, now it's it's moved way over and it wasn't that far before. And actually it's past my bias tape. I don't want it to go past. So I'm going to move adjust that again and move it until I get it to the spot I want it to be hitting my fabric. So I've adjusted when I've been, this is the knob I've been adjusting for that. So I've gotten it right where I want it to sew. And I'm going to go ahead and manually put it into my fabric here. And I need to get my thing moved where I can actually touch it. And uh, I'm going to start off, and then I'm going to back up too. You always want to back up. I know this is not a real project, but... And... Oh! I need to grab a hold of this because it's not feeding through, so I'm going to pull my thread back here to kind of help it pull through. And see, this is keeping, and this is not quite adjusted the way it will. Well, it's moving on me. Let me tighten everything up. Make sure. Don't want that to move because that's helping me hold my bias tape in place. And it keeps everything nice and lined up and feeding it through for me. Hmm. I wonder why 
why this is wiggling so much. Okay. All right, so pull it out and then cut it. So you can see that I kind of moved it. It moved around a little bit, but that was my short side, and this is, so it's going to be a lot further over on my long side. And I used two different kinds of thread. My bobbin thread was white, so that helps a lot with. Um, it sure does jiggle around a lot. It didn't do that to me last night. There's several screws on here. I might need to adjust those. All right, so that was kind of cool. I've I got that and tried that out last night, and that that's what that's helpful for. And then um, this one is for um, a blind hem stitch or just for lining up fabric in general. Um, Let's see, let me find something, some th fabric that this will show up on better. Um, I want a lighter color fabric. Looks like, I don't know why the pink is in there. Um, orange, I guess, but it's not really, well, it'll be a good enough example. I'll use some of this orange fabric because the white and the black will show up on it well well enough. Okay, so and you're going to feed it up to the point where you're and see this will help you line your fabric up to keep it a straight edge and I'm going to go ahead and get it right in there. So say that you wanted to sew this, this is way too close uh, normally you wouldn't want to sew that close to the edge of your fabric, but if you want a nice straight edge, which that one, the fabric's trying to, there we go. Alright, so I was just manually doing that part. So, um, if you would just, it'll help you keep your fabric nice and straight. And I just folded this so it's not even like two pieces of fabric, it's just folded it. We'll pretend it was two different pieces. But see, it helps you keep it lined up. So you end up having a nice straight edge to it. Which I thought that was pretty neat. I really like that. I think I'll, I'll probably use this um, foot more often on my machine now that I've tried it out. But see, it, it kind of helps you keep a, which I would normally not sew that close to the edge. But it helps you keep things straighter. And then... On the blind hem stitch, let's see, I need something a little bit longer than that fabric. Let's see what else we got in here that I could use. Um, I got some more red fabric I can use. Actually, that's way too big. I don't know why that was in my scrap. Basket. Here's some green. Okay, so and I wish I had an iron that I could iron this out. But when you're doing a blind hem stitch like this one that I was showing you, um, you are going to fold it in a way that you're actually going to be sewing it like, let's see, like so. It, the way that you fold it is, is the big difference. So um, I'm going to show you. That looks kind of odd, but um, that's how we're going to fold it, and that's how we're going to sew it also. And you have to change um, to a 4 okay, for your pattern. So I'm going to go over here and change. That's my 4. And I, I think the the length shouldn't matter on it, so we're going to leave that. And um, so the main thing is folding up our fabric correctly. So it looks kind of strange. This is the wrong side, and we're going to pretend that that's where we're. This is a solid color. Um, let's see. I need a straight edge, as much of a straight edge as possible. So that we'll pretend that this is the wrong side on the way that we're folding it. And so, say that you were taking up a pants leg. So, you're going to fold it over. And then, see how this is? 
that's how we're going to fold it up, which I guess I'll fold mine a little bit. That's hard to do with it so close. All right. And you would iron all, iron all of this down. Uh, it would help, help um, do it a little bit better. So, all right. So that's the way we're going to fold it, but then we're going to fold our fabric over like that, which it's going to be kind of awkward because this fabric does not line up real well. But we're pretending that this is the wrong side because this doesn't have a pattern on it, so it's kind of hard to tell. And then you're going to walk this or feed this up here. I'm trying to get my threads out of the way. And you're going to line it up with that right there. See how this little thing is lined up with the folded fabric? And this is how you would do your blind hem stitch. So I'm going to start off here. Okay, so you see all how it kind of jumped around a little bit. Okay, so that's the actual stitch that it did. Um, so, and that's the other side. But the side that would show would be this. And you would, of course, you would iron this down, everything. And you would use a, a color um, thread that closely matches the actual fabric that you're sewing on. So I would have used a green. And so this would more or less what they call blind hem stitch because you're hemming it but if you look at some of the clothing in the stores that's kind of how the bottom edge of your some of your stuff will look because that's the type of stitch that they've used and so it's more or less you know shouldn't really quite be able to see it and that's what the blind hem stitch is so that's how that one works so if you ever want to take up like say you might have bought some pajama bottoms that were too long you liked them but they didn't fit around the waist but they fit the waist area but then they were way too long you could always shorten them and then use the blind hem stitch to um, fix the bottom of your pants without you know seeing the stitches or whatever you could always stitch it differently but if you wanted to do it this way you could and that's what, how this foot is used you can use it for those type of things or if you just want to use it for getting a nice clean uh, straight stitch on your fabric you could do that too so that's what all I've got um, for today um, and as always I always tell everyone this is not getting straight for me um, if you think of any questions or things that you would like me to um, cover in the class for next week um, I, I highly recommend um, either making a comment in the comments for this video or um, you can always message the Nixon library and just say hey um, this message for is for Miss Opal about her sewing 101 class could you cover sewing so, you know this particular thing in your next class and I, I love recommendations um, I'm right now I'm just kind of um, covering things that I think people might be interested in learning about. Um, I'm kind of guessing. So um, if if there's something in particular you'd like me to cover, please feel free to, to like I said, either comment at, on this video or um, send a message to our library and, and just say, hey, this is something I'd be interested in seeing you cover in the Sewing 101 class. Um, so... If y'all want to do that, please feel free to do that. I, I'd like to hear what y'all would um, like me to cover. Um, other than that, next week I'll, I'll just cover more. Some just different little things that you can try with your machine um, that I think that people might be interested in, in learning about. All right, until next time, I'll see y'all later. Bye.